All right, Shape Key Manager Pro update number one. So in this update, we have a little bit of a UI rework and some new uh, features introduced. So I'm gonna start from the top and go down. All right, so the top we have pretty much same as before, the filter and rename settings, just your text filter and your text rename. This is used for duplicating and mirroring and uh, some of the other functionality uses it as well. So now next is our utility operators. These are new, these are just very simple operators for muting uh, shape keys. So you have these two up here to mute and unmute all the shape keys. Then you have uh, ones using a filter. So I'm gonna put in a filter of I. So I'm gonna mute all shape keys by the filter. So it's gonna mute all I shape keys or I can unmute them or I can do the opposite and mute everything that does not contain the filter. So anything that doesn't contain I gets muted or unmuted. <clears throat> and the UI now has, uh, each, uh, each section is boxed off so you can collapse it to reduce the amount of space that it takes up when you're not using the other operators or that specific section. So now we have vertex group assignment. Um, same as before, uh, I'm going to add a vertex group in real quick. But uh, same as before, you set your vertex group. And if you have one set, it will automatically set that any that vertex group to any uh, new vertex group or uh, any new shape key that gets uh, duplicated. But now you also have the option to uh, assign that vertex group to all shape, to all uh, filtered shape keys. So again if i were to use it right now it would apply to all i shape keys like that so now all these i shape keys have the group the vertex group assigned to them next is the mirror and duplicate settings same as before you see uh, your mirror axis your copy shape key driver and filter rename driver slash bone paths pretty simple stuff same as before and then you have your your same duplicate mirror and then dupe mirror shape keys by filter or by the singular shape key. All right, next we have the copy shape keys from selected objects box. You have uh, the same as the same two operators from before, but you also have a new one. This was requested by a couple people. This is uh, used for copying shape keys from one object to another that does not have the same amount of uh, vertices or the same data set. Because if you try to do that by default in Blender, it will, it, it will only work if it has the same vertex count in both meshes. And if the vertex indices or index order is off, it'll be just uh, really like a mess. It won't actually transfer the shape key. So this is a new way to do it. It's, uh, I'm going to get into this later. Uh, I'll demonstrate how it works with these two characters. <clears throat> All right, and then down here we have uh, the driver creation tool. This is uh, somewhat experimental right now. It's sort of like a beta version of it. It's a way to quickly create drivers for the whatever shape key you have selected. So the first new feature I'm going to demonstrate is the transferring of shape keys from objects, uh, from one object to another when they do not have the same uh, vertex count. Alright, so here we have two characters. They're pretty similar, but they're not exactly the same and they have mismatching data. So we couldn't transfer shape keys through the normal method. So the way this new one works is, we're gonna go in here. This one has all the shape keys that we want. It's got some, mostly some uh, expression shape keys. So you got stuff for your, the eye to get bigger, smaller. You got eyebrow raising. And we have some other, like a bicep bulge shape key. And we got some more expression stuff. Right. And so we, what we want to do is we want to take all these shape keys and put it onto this mesh without 
having to do as as little work as possible. So the way this works is it, it matches the data based off of the local uh, coordinates. So we're going to zero out the rotation, location, and scale so that we know that we're working in uh, local space. And what we want to do is we want to go into edit mode, go wireframe, and we want to grab the part of the mesh that we want to match up. In this case, the head is the main part. And we're just going to move it. Oh. Well, first we want to add in a shape key. This is just a temporary shape key to hold the, it, it's a temporary uh, deformation to match the two objects as close as possible. We'll delete this once we're done. So we're going to take this, move it into place, scale it up. I'm going to go to side view, make sure that it's as close as possible. And the neck is a lot larger on the other mesh, so I'm going to scale that up as well. I'm going to use proportional editing just to move stuff into place. It doesn't have to be exact, but as close as you can get it, the better. There. I think that looks pretty close. Right. And I also want to get the arm as close as possible because we have that bicep shape key. I'm going to just hide the other parts because we don't need them. Move it into place, line up the elbow. I'm going to do proportional editing. Again, this doesn't have to be exact, just get it roughly in place. And it helps to like uh, to use A to select everything to make it highlight like this to really tell if you're matching it closely. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the hand because I don't have any shake use for the hand. going out of wireframe is also helpful because you can see the the wireframe of this mesh poking through see where it's not quite matching All right, so that's pretty good match up the shoulder All right, so I say that's good enough so what we have is we have the head matching and the arm matching now, if we had shape keys all over the body, we'd also want to go in and match up the legs and the, uh, the torso, everything as close as possible. But since we don't have that, we don't have to worry about it. Now, we're going to select only the areas that we want to be used to transfer the shape keys. So, on this character, she has a hood. And if I were to keep that in there, it, the hood would most likely latch onto the head of the source object and it would get unwanted deformation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide it and I'm gonna select just the head and the neck. Oh, actually, I need to pull the neck out a little bit in this view. All right, so I'm gonna select just the head and the neck and then the arm. So that should be good. I'm just going to hide the rest for safe measure. And I'm going to turn on limit to selected vertices. This is going to make sure that only these vertices that I have selected are going to uh, transfer the shape key data so that the rest of it doesn't accidentally grab onto something and get unwanted deformations. All right. So now I'm going to select the source object, then I'm going to shift select the object I'm going to copy to. And I'm going to 
come down here. Uh, you can set as many smoothing operation or uh, smoothing iterations as you need to. This is just a corrective smoothing. And another thing to keep in mind is it's a good idea on your source object right here to put a level, a couple levels of subsurf. This will help also smooth out the transfer. So I'm going to select the source object, shift select the other, go down here and use shape keys from selected object. And there we go. It transferred over all these. So I can delete this temporary shape key that I made to match the data. And now you can see the shape keys have transferred and they look pretty good. Check out the arm, make sure that it transferred. Yep. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, first update of Shape Key Manager Pro. If you already have, uh, own a copy, please feel free to reach out to me and let me know what things you'd like to see improved, uh, new features you'd like to have added, tell me just Whatever your thoughts are, feel free to reach out. You can leave a comment on the video, or you can reach uh, you can reach me on Twitter at Cody Winch. If you aren't uh, already a uh, and if you don't already own a copy of uh, Shape Key Manager Pro, you can find it on the Blender Market. There will be a link in the description below. Uh, thank you for your time, and see you next time.